Hello and welcome back uh, to the video series about the TouchGFX integration with the Cube IDE. In the last video, we looked at how to update the the user interface from the from the hardware. So in this video, I will focus on how to update the hardware from the user interface. So you probably remember that in the last video we did we did um, we did this uh, XQ send where we sent a value. To, uh, to the model of the touch GFX. Um, let's see if we can find it here in the go in the source here in the model.cpp. So we listen in, the, in this queue uh, for a value and then we can show that value. Um, we can forward that value to the presenter on the screen here, uh, the presenter.cpp. We have this set new value. And then lastly, we have the, the view.cpp that actually does the display of the value. So what we're going today is that we're going to reverse this process. So first of all, we're going to open the, the Touch GFX designer and uh, have a look at the user interface. So right now we just have a, a label and then we have this button here, which switches to the second screen. So I will add uh, another button and it could be a button with a label, just to change things up here. Uh, and then we can just write on that next number like this. Um, uh, just call this uh, button for next number like this. So what we're going to do in the designer here is that we're going to add an interaction and that interaction is we already have the first one, which is the, the button in the middle that changes the screen. We're going to add another interaction and the trigger is, of course, is when a button is clicked, the button is the button for next number. And the action here is we're going to call a new virtual function. And this uh, this is where we call the function that uh, is in the, the viewer, which then calls a function in the presenter, which then in turn calls the model. So we will just call this uh, ask for new number like this. And we don't need any parentheses here. Uh, so we just write the, the function name and that's actually it. And we're doing, going to generate the code like this. And we can see down here that it says code generation complete. So I will put away the touch GFX designer. I'll just keep the it on my second screen for, for reference um, because ask for new number method name is, I'm, I'm going to forget that in a few seconds. We're going to start in the in the model.cpp here. Uh, we have this uh, tick method, which is called every time you update the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write in the model another uh, uh, function called void um, get new number. Um, we don't need any arguments here, but what we're going to do here is we're going to create another queue and instead of receiving it, uh, look at the receiving end as we do in the tick method, we're going to send uh, a message here. So um, I'm going to create another queue here, just um, message queue two, uh, and we're going to instantiate that one, like this here, just a single number. Um, and instead of uh, XQ receive, like we do in the tick, we're going to um, Like this here, we're going to write xq send. The queue we're going to send to is the message q2. Um, and we, we, we don't need any information to actually do this, we just need um, a, a message uh, with zero content. So we're basically just going to send the counter value here. We, we could send data back and forth if we wanted, but we don't really need that. So when we call this get new number, we will send a, a message into the queue, message queue two. Um, yes. And how are we going to call this? Oh yeah, I almost forgot. We need to go into the, uh, the header file, of course, and define this get new number. Like 
like this. So now the mo uh, I'll just regroup this. So we have the model.hpp along with model.cpp here. So get new number is defined, and we're going to find the on the screen the presenter.hpp as well, and group that with the presenter.cpp here. So uh, on the HPP file here, we're going to um, make another uh, function that will call this model. So we're just going to write avoid. Uh, and what did I call it in the model here? Uh, get new number. We're going to call this ask uh, for next number. Uh, it don't take any arguments here. So this is just the function definition in the HPP file. Copy that and make a void screen one presenter. Like yeah, we need no, we don't this like this. Need this yes. And um, in now we're in the presenter view here or in the presenter. Um, we need to ask the model to uh, to uh, run this get new number function like this. So the presenter asks the model. Uh, now we need the view to ask the presenter for to call this. So we're going to open the um, uh, screen one view dot hpp here as well. Um, and we're going to have an yet another function where get new or just get number like this. And in the screen one dot cpp we're going to write void screen one uh, view get number like so so this is the the view uh, class here is the lowest one so that is actually a way, uh, it's it's able to get values from the screen as well so if we want to pass an argument back to the system we will want to uh, do it here. So we want to write presenter and then the arrow one here. And if we just go back here for a second, if I write presenter um, and try to tap complete here, be aware that we want the actual instance of the presenter called presenter with a, a small case P and not the general class presenter with an uppercase P. Uh, that took me a while to figure out. So we want the presenter like this one. And we can see here we have this ask for next number. Uh, and I can see that the U is also uppercase. Let's just fix that. It's probably uh, it's uppercase there. And it's uppercase. Yeah, well, so it's so like this. So now we have from the, the small, this uh, get number here. Um, that is actually the function that is called in the call virtual function. So if we re find the designer again here, um, I call it ask for new number here. Um, let me just change that to get number, get number, uh, and then press generate code again, like so. So now uh, we should be able to, to build this code. Let me just check if that works out. It didn't. Oh no. Let's have it. So get new number here. Uh, oh yeah, of course. Model here. Let's see. Model. Uh, get new number is defined. Okay. Model get new number there like this uh, and in model here get new number yeah of course I need the model colon colon here that's just me not being used to C++ Let's see if this works. Yes. So now we can compile this and uh, we can probably also debug this. So when we press the, the button we made in the in the designer, 
the get next number here, we are sending a message into the message queue two here. But we need to do something with this message as well, and we need to to yeah, to handle this in some way. So we go back to the main uh, file here, or main.cpp, and uh, right now we have a for loop that uh, sent uh, a message into message uh, in the message queue where it's in the value here. And uh, every time we do this, the val is increased by uh, one. So I want to, uh, I just insert the, the message queue two here so we have access to that. And then we can use reuse the code that we, ha that we have in the, in the model here. So if our message receive here is true, we can do something. Uh, so every time a one second has passed here, we will check if message queue two has uh, some new information. And if it does, we can say val uh, is equal to, let's say just uh, val plus 50, just to change the value. Um, we can do all sorts of things here. And basically this is mo one of the most simple examples that we have here. What is important to hear that this counter here, we we need to change that to, to val here. It's not important um, the value that we send. So from the, the the model here, we are we are sending the counter value. So we're sending the, the number that was previously set uh, back into the main, but we don't use that information to anything. Um, we could we could we could write whatever we want here. So we just use this as an um, as a trigger. To, to add 50 to val. So let we, if we just debug this now, just we want to save, we get, we upload this to the board and I'm sorry, I don't have any camera that we can uh, uh, get a video of the actual board. Um, I'll just try to tell you what happens on the screen when we run this. So what, what I'm expecting it to happen is that we have a value that increases every time, uh, once every second. And if I press the button get number, I will just add 50 to that current number. Uh, so let's see if that actually happens. Uh, let's press resume here. And I have a value that increases two, three, four, five, next number. And then now it's 56, 57, 58. I can do it again, 109, 110. So now we have a system. I can just stop this again. It will continue uh, running. Yeah. So we have a system now where we can have uh, the UI, a number here, which will call uh, an, a virtual function, in this case, get number. And that get number is available in the screen one view.cpp. It's defined in screen one view.hpp. That calls all the ask the presenter for a function called ask for next number, which is defined in the screen one presenter.cpp, which in turn asks uh, the model for the method get new number. So we could, from this screen one view, we could uh, insert an argument here. Uh, it could be a state of a button. It could be a value of, uh, of a scroll uh, menu or some something. So we could pass arguments up through from the view through the presenter back to the model and we could send that to uh, other hardware we could send it to a serial port or whatever so now we have demonstrated uh, now i have demonstrated how you can uh, get information from the ui and onto the hardware so thanks for watching